Okay, so I want to make myself a new clock for the workshop. There used to be one hanging up there on the wall, but it broke. So I'm going to try and make myself a new one. I know exactly what I want to make it out of. And the first part of it is in here. If we can find the right one. There it is. That's the front shoe off of that big horse Anna that I shod in one of my previous videos. The biggest one I've got and it's fairly clean so I'm going to use that. Now what else do we need? Oh yes, some stamps, number stamps. There we go. Nice old set I've had for years and years. What else do we want? Something to fill in the the back. Let's see what we got down here. Bit of steel. That's what I'm looking for. Bit of copper. Had that kicking about for years from something or other. Not quite sure what, but I reckon that'll do the job. Cut that out from there. Now then, what else do we need? Yes, quite essential. Clock mechanism. Look at the crap in here. Um, and I think in this cupboard up here, I've got a couple. I think my sister-in-law gave me a couple years ago. And I never got around to making anything out of them. If I can get to them. There's one. That's it. And buy these real cheap from most craft shops. They come with various different arms. You can get them with various different arms. Not quite sure what the arms on this one are. I think they look quite fancy. What's that say? Oh, it's upside down. Eachbuyer.com. Don't know where that's from. That must have been where she got them from. So, we need one of them. That'll do there. Now what else do we need? Um, ah, something to attach the back to the front. That's going to be easy. Some nails. It's the obvious answer. So on half a dozen number sixes. Ideally they want to be sevens, but I haven't got sevens in copper. They don't make them that big. So I think these will have to do. So, that's about all the materials gathered. First off though, I want to clean up this shoe. Although it's fairly shiny, the fullering is absolutely full of mud, muck and all sorts. As you can see, I'm just going to clean that out. And a wire wheel. Real handy these wire wheels for doing this sort of thing. Give it a bit of a tidy up while I'm at it. Right off. It's been sitting in the back of the truck for well, must be a good week or more since I did Anna, so it's started to go a little bit rusty, but get the worst of it off. these old grinders. Right, next thing I just want to punch out the muck and stuff, stones and all sorts in those holes. The holes I didn't use when I put the shoe on. So I'm just going to quickly knock them out with my pritchel.
Tam. There we go. All ready. It's actually quite a nice shape as well. Her feet are a pretty good shape, so I don't need to round it up at all. It's uh, quite nice as it is. Now, what I want to do with this clip, I actually want to put a hole in it and use it as an alternative method of hanging it. Um, so I'm going to put this bit of eighth in there, and try and bang the clip down, because I want to leave a bit of a gap behind. So when I drill the hole, there's a, a bit of room for the head of the nail or whatever I hang it on to uh, to go into. If you can see that, it's just left myself a nice little bit of gap. Yep, you can see that quite well. So I'm just going to put a hole in there, and that'll be something to hang it from. Just put that back in there because I'm going to. It'll just help when I drill. Just to stop it flexing. Now this doesn't look like it's going to work. No. <laughs> no, that ain't going to work. What's happening is it's just skidding. The drill's vibrating. It's got a bit of a bend in the drill. So I'm just going to put a centre punch dot. There we go. And that will just centralise that drill, which has got a bit of a headache. There we go. Let's cool it. There we go. That's all we need. Just something that uh, you know I can put a nail through with a bit of a gap or we'll hang it on. So let's mark it out on the copper. Get my sharpie. Mark round it. You probably can't hear it on the video because I've turned the volume right down, but it's absolutely tipping me rain today. Really is hammering down on that, my tin roof. But as I turn the volume down when I do the narration, you probably can't hear it. But it's Easter, and of course we've got four days holiday. It's forecast to tip me rain. Right, so there we go. Got it marked out. I'm just going to cut it out with these ordinary old tin snips. It's quite thick copper actually for the copper sheet, but uh, these will do it quite easily. It goes steady, so I want to try and keep on the line. Bit of a Duresta style. I'm going to bore you senseless. Done. Chuck that bit away. Right, let's see if it fits. That should fit quite nicely. Yep, there we go. Not a bad fit at all. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut that little bit out for the clip because at the moment it's taken up the room that I made when I bent the clip over. So I'm just going to get that out of the way, that little bit. Just to give my nail that I, or if I decide to hang it on, somewhere to go. That's it. Done. There you go. You'd never know. Right, so, <coughs> excuse me. Let's get it marked now, get the nail holes marked where I'm going to attach it. 
But unfortunately, that ain't going to work. Sharp is too thick. It's not going to go through the hole. So let me see if I can find something thin and sharp that I can mark it with. Can't find anything at the moment. Yeah, obvious. Uh, a nail. So I'm just going to hold it all still. Just mark around each hole with the nail. So I'm only going to use six nails. If you can see that, you probably can't, but I can. Trust me, it's marked quite nicely. So I'm just going to put a little centre dot on them all and drill them out. If I can find my centre punch. This needs a light tap. Oh, hello. Oh, lost the end off my bloody punch. Just put a grind it up. Alright, that was quick. Ground it up. Let's put an end back on it. This is hopeless, this punch. I think it was a originally for woodwork. Um, and it's as soft as anything. And I've tried hardening it up. And I think that was the result. I hardened it and I just chipped the end off it. I hope to make myself a decent one out of some... I've got some spring steel somewhere. Right, there we go. All nice and punched. Let's go and drill them out. You don't want to push too hard when you're drilling copper. Because you find that what tends to happen, instead of it drilling it, it sort of just burns its way through and leaves a blooming great burr at the back of it. You're still probably likely to get a bit of a burr anyway, um, drilling it, but do a nice sharp drill and just go through really gently. There you go. Six holes. Now there, just over eight, I suppose. Maybe 532, which is plenty big enough. You can see the nails go through. I just want to put a couple in, hold it in place, because I want to mark the um, what's, what do you call it? The in, inner edge. You can see what I want to do. Just want to mark around there, so that I can work out my measurements for where everything's got to go, because I want to work out the centre to get the clock in there and then also where I'm putting my numerals so that line that I've just gently scribed will give me a good idea where everything's got to go so let's see if I can find a tape measure let's just get rid of and uh, where is it tape measure yep over there Let's get rid of all this rubbish. Put them out of the way. Right. This tape measure's seen better days. But it's about 115mm. So what do I want? That's about 57.5 that I want to go to the centre, so it's about, where is it, 50, 5, 7, yeah, about there. That's that way, and then we're going to do the same down from the top. There's no point doing it from the up from the bottom, because there's, it's obviously going to be a lot different. So we're going to go down from the top, again, <coughs> excuse me, again, 57. X marks a spot. Give it a little pop. And we're going to have to find out exactly what diameter hole we need in there. So if we get the clock, 
mechanism. Get it out of this packet. Doesn't seem an obvious way of getting it out. It's the arms. There we go. So, let's have a little measure. 8 mil. So that's easy enough. Let's go and whack an 8 mil hole in there. No, oh, not running. I've just swapped it from high ratio to low ratio. It hadn't gone in. perfect now you'll notice there is actually a, a hanging hook on the back of this so I could use that um, but I generally don't trust them they're normally not as meaty as this this one's actually got quite a good meaty one on it and I think it would suffice but if it doesn't then what I've done at the top on the clip will you know especially if you're making a clock out of something really heavy you know a big bit of plate or something or other um, it's always ideal to have a, an, a, an additional hanging method because those plastic ones can break. Right, let's work out where the numbers are going to go. So I'm just going to eyeball this. I've got the, the scribed line of the shoe. So I'm just going to... That's upside down for you, but... I'll try and no, I'm not going to try and do it that way because I can't get it right if I'm trying to get out of the way of the camera. So you'll have to bear with me while it's upside down. So I'm just eyeballing this. I'm going off the little scribed line I put in. Something like that. That's all I'm going to do. It's 12, 3, 6, and 9. So, find me punches. Now these punches are actually for hot punching, but as it's only going in copper, I'm not going to worry too much. If I wouldn't dare use them in in steel, uh, cold. But uh, as I say, as it's going into nice soft copper, I don't think it'll worry them. Now we've got six and nine but I don't know which is which. Generally, on a set of numbers, you just get a six, which doubles as a nine. But on here, we've got both, so I'm gonna have to have a little look to see if there is actually a difference. So I'm gonna put something underneath here as well, because I'm a little bit worried that it's gonna damage the uh, punches, punching into the anvil, so I'm just going to put this little bit of aluminium, yes, aluminium, underneath it, just to uh, absorb some of the impact. They're all a bit mucky, these, so I'm just going to go and give them a quick wire brush up. Just think they might make a bit of a crisper. There we go bit of a crisper letter, number, if they're a bit cleaner. They haven't been used for years, so they're covered in rust. This is everything in this shop. Right, let's have a little go. Not quite any idea how hard to hit it. Mm, let's have a little look. Yeah, that's pretty good. But as you can see, it's gone right through into the the alley, so I might actually use a bit of steel rather than an alley. Um, it's sort of the alley's a little bit too soft. I think the anvil's going to be too hard. 
If I get find a bit of scrap steel somewhere, if I can find a bit. Hello, what about this? This might do the trick. That great big lump of steel. That might do it. Let's have a little go. I'm a bit worried about hitting it too hard and actually going through the copper. I don't want to, you know, split through it, cause a, a hole in the copper. So I'm playing it a bit cautiously. Again, I'm just going to line all these up by eye. Because at the end of the day, it's only a, a rough old clock for the workshop. It's, you know, not some great artifact. Just so I can tell the time. That's a little bit better doing it on that bit of steel. It's can't really see it. It's, it's embossed it quite deeply, but if it's if I discover that it's I can't read it very well, I might actually put some black paint in it or something or other in each one, so that it can actually see them better. But for the time being, we'll just leave it. Now I don't know if this is a six or a nine, but I'm just going to use it because I can't really see much difference in them. Um, I suppose I ought to have done some tests with the six and the nine beforehand, but hey ho, that's just me, isn't it? Can't really see that because I've done a, a nine with a or drawn a nine with a straight. Let's just knock this cop uh, lead down a bit. I've drawn a a nine with a straight leg and it's actually got a rounded one on this so let's do the three it's a little bit more and just the six to go all right, so which one did I use? Which one was it? I really can't see much difference in these. You probably can't see, but the one on the left, as you're looking at it, has got a bigger circle at the bottom. So I don't know if that's the six or the nine, and I don't know which one it was I used before. So, hey-ho. So if I'd done a bit of a trial, I might have known. Right, so just about sort of see them there. I'm just gonna do that six again, a little bit harder. Right, so I'm just gonna go give that a bit of a clean up. I don't want it to be polished but I just want to take the muck off the surface. So I'm just going to quickly go and rub that off. Right, I've taken off a bit more than I actually wanted to but it's still quite rough. You can just about see. There's still a lot of surface imperfections and damage and dings. It's a bit, a little bit shinier than I wanted it but I wanted to keep it a little bit more sort of rustic but or not rustic, what's the word? Aged. But it's okay. It'll do. I'm sure it'll uh, darken down fairly quickly. So if I can get this thing out uh, it won't come out. All right, got it out. Let's start trying to put this together. So we're going to put a nail in each or every other hole. So three down each side, which is actually basically what you do when you're shoeing. The, the, the shoe actually has multiple holes 
basically just so it gives you choice. You've got a horse with rubbishy old feet. You can pick and choose where you put the nails in to try and get a decent bit of foot. So let's just tap these down. Let's try and seat them nicely. And what I'll have to do is try and snip them off with my snips like I do with my pincers, like I do when I'm shoeing, but for some reason that seems bloody tough. I don't know why. Why is it so different when I'm Get both hands on it, that might help. Of course, it's still a bit tough, you know. I've got it, but only just. Right, then just simply rivet it down. Oop, losing all my nails. They're all dropping out all over the place. Just like that. Now, that's actually marked that nail a little bit, but. It might polish off, or I might just leave it. I'm, and so I'm not all that fast. I'm losing all my nails everywhere. Let me get one on the other side. Where is it? There it is. So it doesn't move. Let's see if we can snip that one off. Any easier? Yeah, that's easier. That's what it is. I'm having to use two hands. Move that one down. You can see how worn this shoe is because those nails, they're actually too small really for this shoe, but they are just protruding. Which, if they were the right size nails uh, in a new shoe, they wouldn't protrude. They'd be flush. That's simple as that. You want to make sure you get one in each, at least one in each side, just so that the whole thing doesn't move. Because the worst thing can happen is you can rivet all one side or one down or, or couple in one side, and then find that it's the whole thing's moved, and you can't get your other ones in the other side. These shoeing nails are really soft, so they rivet over really easy. Not sure what they're made up of. Bit of tin in them, I think, because they, when they're not plated with copper, they rust in seconds. You know, you have a a rainstorm on a few in the morning. By the afternoon, they've they've gone red rusty. So I think that's the tin in them. One more. Right, let's uh, see if I can, I'll tell you what, let's see if I can get you a bit closer. Zoom in a little bit. And there's a little bit more, and we can see what's going on a bit better. And that's it. Simple as. There you go. That's not bad. I want to take the edge off. You can see it's just protruding a little bit, which was intentional. Um, I always like to leave a little bit so you can grind or file it off. Nothing worse than putting it all together and then finding it doesn't meet at a certain spot. So I'm just going to grind that back. I'm just doing this on a bit of old cloth because I don't want to damage the nails on the bench. Just taking it back until it's just touching the, the steel. It's all nice and flush. I suppose the other thing I could have done, I say it's only an old clock so it doesn't really matter, but if you were doing this as a gift or something and you wanted to make sure it was pucker 
you could actually epoxy the copper or the material that you're putting on the back down as well as glue as nail it um, just so that you can see there at the toe it's not stuck or it's not down touching very tightly and when you get round to the heel there as well you can see it's not touching very tightly there's a little bit of a, uh, a gap so I dare say you could have epoxied that in just to make sure there you go that'll do me so if I find I can't see those letters I will put some black in them so assembly time see if we can get it all out these arms are pretty fancy I'm not keen on them but they're all we've got Now in here with the arms there should be some nuts and bolts or nuts and washers. That's the second hand. You can see how much that's going to need cutting down. A good sort of inch and a quarter maybe even more. Get the others out. They're really delicate these arms. Don't know how they cut them out or they stamp them out with something. Drop me washer. There we go, a little brass washer. So we've got a, a rubber washer which only goes one way actually, it goes the other way up. And then we've got the brass washer and a little brass nut. Tighten that down. Make sure it's up the middle. I'm just going to tighten it down very gently with a pair of pliers. It doesn't need a lot, these things. Just give it a tweak up so it's pulling into the rubber. Just check again that it's running up the middle. Right, now I've got to sort these hands out because as you can see they are way too long I'm pretty sure at home I've got some plain ones that came off another set that I did on something else so I might see if I can find them and use them instead of these because you can't see these ones very well either being gold but I'm going to use them for now in case I haven't got any at home, you can see there how much they've got to cut, be cut down. So I'll see if we can do that. And there, that one, the second hand, it's got loads to come off. All right, I'm going to quickly see if I can modify them. Right, I've sort of done it. You can see what I've done. That's what the original. I've taken about an inch and a quarter or more off of there. That was the original. And I've taken way loads off of that, probably half of its length, and re-pointed it. And the same with that one. I've taken loads off of that one, modified it back into a point. Not perfect, not ideal, but working with what I've got so there you go see if we can find a battery we'll get it up on the wall and see how it looks there we go I found one back in its rightful place where the old one used to be simple little project probably would make a nice gift for somebody. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.